good afternoon, everyone. I think we're having such a great time. It's a really well-organized uh, uh, forum. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm learning so much. I'm a forester by training. I'm sitting here with such, you know, it's such, such uh, a room full of uh, you know, people knowledgeable about how to encourage uh, agricultural cooperatives. Uh, is, you know, it's been a, such a learning boom for me. Um, I'm going to uh, talk uh, very briefly um, about uh, uh, UNDP's initiatives in supporting agricultural uh, cooperatives. Now, a little disclaimer right, right in the beginning, because uh, we do not have specific sort of initiatives uh, that support agricultural cooperatives. But what we do have is a series of individual country projects that work on natural resource management, uh, on biodiversity conservation, that have elements of uh, agricultural cooperatives. So what I've done is picked up those. So to do that, let me first, uh, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk very briefly. Uh, UNDP, uh, it's uh, um, by some standards, it's a fairly big organization. So there's, we address a lot of issues from governance to poverty reduction to health, HIV, uh, so on and so forth. But one of the uh, sort of smaller areas that we work on is uh, the global environment finance work. And within that sits uh, uh, the, uh, the work we do on ecosystems and biodiversity. So I'll very quickly introduce the work we do, zero in on that, the uh, ecosystems and biodiversity program. Um, then I said, uh, as I said earlier, I'm going to uh, provide some examples uh, from uh, the various projects, national projects, on uh, supporting, promoting, or you know, uh, creating agricultural natural resource management cooperatives. So at least in my understanding what agricultural, I mean, having listened to all the presentations, some of them actually I realize may not necessarily be agricultural or you know, may, may not necessarily be cooperatives, but then nonetheless community groups that are working together to address uh, resource management uh, issue. Uh, some lessons in integration, again, I, won't, I will come to that and, uh, uh, towards the end. So one might ask, uh, why is UNDP as a development organization working, for, uh, working on issues of biodiversity and ecosystems? And very quickly, um, I'm not going to read everything, so don't worry, but very quickly, the key premise or the key reason why UNDP works on biodiversity and ecosystems is the fact that poor people depend on eco natural resources, particularly ecosystem services, for their livelihood. And with regressive factors like climate change and the impacts of climate change and several, you know, and various uh, impacts that come with uh, it, these become increasingly difficult. Poor do not have, uh, in, uh, uh, substitute, rich, can subs rich people can substitute uh, you know, ecosystem services with uh, other substitutes, but poor can't. Um, more than 75% of world's poorest people live in areas where they depend on natural resources, including agricultural services. So that's why we, uh, we as a development agency, we feel it's important uh, to work on biodiversity and ecosystems. So therefore, we have a program, a small, uh, nonetheless, within the uh, UNDP, uh, probably in terms of UN agency, one of the largest, if not the, and uh, we have a portfolio that has worked uh, in several countries over 40 years. Uh, uh, we have a global portfolio on biodiversity, currently uh, slightly more than uh, US dollars, five billion. We are active in, and I, I haven't revised this, we, have, we are actually active in around 165 countries uh, and uh, our work so far has uh, um, you know, been carried out uh, in terms of protected areas, uh, securing uh, and conserving protected areas, uh, covering more than 270 million hectares. Uh, we also work uh, in several uh, production sectors, particularly in integrating biodiversity uh, and overall uh, on the ground work in terms of projects in various countries uh, cover area that is greater than India. 
a portfolio of work in, you know uh, has been generously funded through uh, UNDP core resources but increasingly and more importantly through global environment finance sources such as the GEF, uh, the GCF, uh, the Jeff Small Grants, uh, and uh, the ICI and the EI and several other sources of funds. So to address all this and to bring it home to sort of to in a coherent structure, UNDP in uh, 2014, uh, uh, sorry, 2012 developed a global strategy for ecosystems and biodiversity. Three key signature programs were developed. One is integrating biodiversity into development planning and economic sectors. The second signature program is basically unlocking the potential of protected areas to deliver benefits to local communities, to na nations, um, and also they are sustainably financed and well managed. Signature program three revolves around using natural capital, using natural solutions for dealing with the uh, issues of climate change, be it mitigation or adaptation. And we deliver these uh, these three signature programs mainly through uh, uh, two key approaches. The first being really about developing capacities, capacities at the individual level, institution, policy, uh, systemic levels. And second, uh, you know, in, by combining, identifying, sequencing global resources, but also increasingly and more importantly, national resources for effective management of uh, ecosystems and biodiversity. So jumping into uh, some of the examples mined from the portfolio, some of them uh, uh, from this region, some from elsewhere. The first one is in India. Uh, we had a g project in the Gulf of Mana on coastal and marine biodiversity conservation project. The project did a lot of things in terms of preparing marine action plan, in terms of declaring marine protected areas. But one uh, key component that I thought is relevant is in terms of uh, working with several uh, self-help groups. Um, a total of uh, you know, 2,300 self-help groups is supported. And the groups pointed out to us, look, you know, for sustainability, we need to find, uh, uh, come together as a cooperative. Uh, we need to set up a corporate fund. So that's what we worked on. Uh, the Corpus Fund uh, delivered loans to members. Uh, the, the big, uh, it was in a, maybe like a diverse uh, cooperative. It had a state level cooperative and then there were sort of several uh, panchayat and village level uh, groups. And these groups access re uh, uh, credit from the Corpus Fund. Um, what we real, uh, found out was uh, when Community groups uh, borrow uh, re uh, money, uh, credit, uh, you know, the, the, the repa repayment was far, uh, you know, the, the rate was far more uh, higher than, you know, individual borrowers. The second example comes from Nepal, uh, very close to my country. Um, and we had a w sustainable management of wetlands uh, project. Um, here, a uh, couple of things I wanted to focus on. Uh, under, one of the, uh, under one of the components uh, dealing with livelihood improvement programs, we set up several uh, groups. Uh, now, this may not be uh, strictly cooperatives, but community groups working on, for example, uh, community forestry, working on uh, coming together to make, uh, you know, Nepalese uh, traditional paper. And uh, a range of uh, support went towards uh, supporting these groups. A key thing that I wanted to highlight was, and these, you know, in the, what, what, as we implemented this project, what we learned was that uh, communities weren't uh, homogenous, and I think we all appreciate that, but they uh, encouraged us to develop a tool which is now called JESSE, which is a, a gender equality and social inclusion tool. So the, the fact that we worked with different communities and you know, uh, that allowed us to develop this tool, uh, allowed us to uh, target our interventions and a couple of uh, key outcomes uh, were achieved. One is of course increased participation in natural resource management, uh, for example in communities from a range of uh, uh, members in the society. Um, 
Another one is, uh, you know, as a co-benefit, there was this uh, improved gender equality in society. And of course, uh, uh, participation in several uh, group activities, uh, such as paper making, piggery, etc., uh, the inc household increase, uh, income was increased from up, you know, up to 30 to 35%. Then we move to India, again, uh, in the northeast states, uh, uh, in the Nagaland, we were uh, implementing a project on sustainable land and ecosystem management, particularly addressing shifting cultivation or the Jum uh, agriculture. Here, uh, Nagaland, uh, as some of you may know, is a tribal society. Um, land use decisions are made at the tribal village council, uh, women are especially excluded. Uh, so what the, uh, in stakeholder meetings, what we were told and what we sort of uh, then picked on was that there was a need to form women's groups uh, uh, and, you know, form, uh, especially if you are going to help uh, improve their livelihoods, they need to come together as a cooperative or as a group. And uh, we formed several of these uh, for agribusiness. Um, one of the key things we did was uh, uh, this uh, participatory uh, uh, land use planning uh, in a 3D, uh, preparing 3D maps in the village. And uh, what that helped was, uh, uh, you know, in addition to meeting the project objectives, helped uh, the uh, gender representation in these village councils. Now, this one is from Cook Islands in the Pacific. Uh, access and benefit sharing projects uh, are a really good way of uh, delivering incentives to local communities. Uh, here, communities came together, this example, uh, to form an enterprise, a community-based enterprise, and worked with, uh, with a branch of uh, enterprise based in Australia, working on uh, you know, some biological resource. So basically around bio, uh, benefit sharing and uh, employment. I'm moving fast because I'm running out of time. Um, then to my home country, Bhutan, several cooperatives uh, under uh, uh, agrobiodiversity and livestock project on uh, in introduc introducing new crops, uh, in uh, diversifying uh, food products. Then we, uh, similar to the Nagaland, uh, we set up uh, SLM funds uh, for community uh, cooperatives uh, at the provincial level to scale up uh, uh, sustainable land management measures that were promoted as part of the project. In Colombia, uh, one of the projects that was working on uh, sustainable coffee brought together several uh, uh, small scale farmers and the idea was to improve the economic benefit to these farmers. Uh, in addition to all the sustainable practices, what uh, the project did together with the group was to sort of help argue the case that, you know, with better certification, better management, they stand to gain, uh, you know, more economic benefit. Um, Again, what became clear was working with these cooperatives, the importance of working with leadership, particularly women in, these, uh, in the value chains. Finally, uh, the last example comes from Sudan. This is a climate change mitigation project, uh, uh, especially working to replace diesel power, irrigation pumps with solar uh, pumps. Uh, there was a... Uh, a lot of demonstration, uh, you know, at least 28 pumps being installed. But what became clear was uh, for, to access credit, and I think one of the speakers earlier mentioned, it was very important uh, that farmers came either in the form of a group or a cooperative because individual farmers did not have either the capacity or the mortgage or all that that was necessary to access these resources. So this is currently happening. Uh, results uh, will be reported soon, but I think the, 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 the key expectation is that, uh, you know, a lot of jobs will be created, uh, green jobs and energy stability would be uh, achieved. Another uh, example is, uh, and this is with uh, several UN agencies, uh, with UNDP uh, also a key partner. It, this is on the Green Commodities Program. And why I wanted to highlight this was particularly in terms of the, the, the key approaches uh, for 
uh, under this program. Uh, one is bringing together these uh, commodity, uh, what's called the national commodity pr platform and bringing together uh, private sector from both, uh, you know, na uh, private sector and buyers from outside with national level uh, government and producers and pr uh, stakeholders uh, through this national state and that has uh, several common elements with uh, maybe at a macro level in terms of how a cooperative uh, organization is can be designed so very quickly uh, I know I am quite close to the time allotted but some lessons now I know I'm, I'm not going to delve in uh, uh, a lot of the lessons uh, I'm sure uh, many of the speakers, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, you know, I've learned a lot uh, and many speakers have dealt on the lessons far better than I can. Uh, but what, through the, all these projects uh, that I've been engaged in myself and having reviewed some of them uh, together with colleagues, what we've learned is one of the primary benefits uh, of, uh, you know, a cooperative or a community uh, collective is in terms of access to credit. And I think we discussed that in the morning. That's really important. Um, coming together as a group, uh, you know, allows them to access uh, uh, not just credit, but several other uh, facilities. And uh, so that helps look, uh, you know, farmers and communities. The other one is, you know, they come together for a particular cooperative activity, but the, the value is really in terms of the social capital that's generated. I think some of these uh, co-benefits or indirect benefits are sometimes far outweigh, you know, what uh, uh, we intend to do. So I think these were some of the lessons, and I think there's several, I mean, from just the session earlier, there are several examples and ideas from Korea that could be uh, taken uh, elsewhere in the region and globally. In terms of lessons, I think I will not belabor the point, but uh, what we, uh, you know, where it worked was where there was a, a stable legal environment, a supportive environment, together with, at the local level, uh, champions who push forward these groups. Uh, Capacities were always an uh, issue, so, in, uh, you know, especially supporting in terms of technical support, like including business planning where uh, uh, ingredients for success, uh, governance, I think, including uh, in the morning we talked about one member, one board. We didn't really uh, have details like that, but governance is, you know, we realized it was really important. Uh, targeting is important. Uh, we need to make sure whether it's uh, women-specific groups or, uh, you know, just uh, working on particularly poor uh, groups uh, is very important. Um, in terms of the how this has helped uh, the UNDP biodiversity strategy, I think a lot of jobs creation, the social impacts were really clear. Uh, it was also clear in terms, you know, group the the value of uh, groups in terms of helping deliver inclusive development was uh, 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 highly uh, appreciated by uh, you know national you know our partner governments. One thing we have to work on and make it more explicit uh, is the is the link with uh, biodiversity conservation. I I think with that I will end here. Thank you very much.